Welcome back. As we promised in our intro, we are going to dedicate the second main segment of our episode to the latest developments on the tourism sector in Egypt. And to shed more light uh, on this important topic, we are very much delighted to have with us via phone Mr. Ehab Kamel, our tourism expert. A very good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Sir, let's start with winter in Egypt, with this initiative and what it offers. Well, we have to understand that Egypt is one of the very few win winter destinations worldwide. When you look worldwide about, uh, in, around all the world, you will not find that many winter destinations, whether we're talking about beach holidays or we're talking about cultural tourism as well. So basically, Egypt is one of the unique winter destinations, of course, um, the world is seeing now un, an unusual situation, which we've never seen Unprecedented. before. Unprecedented. Exactly. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, something I, it's something that words cannot describe, actually. So it's something um, logical that we would present Egypt in a different way, like an oasis for tourists who are seeking um, good weather, which... Uh, if you look around, you will see that bad weather, uh, waves of bad weather are hitting the world worldwide. Yeah. So I think it's, it's quite um, an important initiative that um, the tourism sector has offered um, about, the, about these offers uh, for winter. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, also I from here demand that the work those who work in the tourism sect sector should be vaccinated. That sure. will make a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, that will make a difference worldwide, especially that um, there is lots of demand on Egypt at the moment. All the signs and all the indications shows that once this pandemic is over, Egypt will see a touristic boom. Yep. Like in 2019 and some other years before. And we have to be prepared for this. Yeah. Sir, um, some statistics were released yesterday saying that between July and December, Egypt received 1.4 million tourists. Um, among the difficulties the whole world is all suffering from and the circumstances uh, of the flights, of the international flights, of the quarantine, everything related to the repercussions of COVID-19. How do you see this number? Well, the number is not big, but when you look at it, it's an indication which shows that Egypt is still a very popular tourist destination. Mm -hmm. The number itself, as I said, it's not a big number, but it shows that there are still lots of people who are interested to come to Egypt, even with the present situation of COVID-19. Yeah. Of course, um, this, uh, as I, this, as I said, it indicates that once the pandemic is over, we will be seeing the case is going to be totally different. It, Sir, it's going to be totally different, uh, yeah. exactly. Media is a very important tool propag uh, to propagate for Egypt. Of course, Egypt does not need that propagation, uh, propaganda, I'm sorry. But yet, propaganda is one of the main factors of reviving any industry. And tourism is on top of the list. Social media now is also playing a very important role. How do you see the role of social media in promoting the tourism sector? I think social media is, is now um, it's, it's part of uh, the marketing tools that we have, and it's an essential part of marketing tools that we have for marketing for a tourist destination, not only Egypt, but worldwide they started using social media. For example, when you look at um, some of the celebrities who had visited Egypt in 2019 and 2020, look at the number of followers yeah. that, that had seen their pictures in Egypt and the impact was 
something unprecedented. And I think that had helped a lot in the touristic boom, mm -hmm. which we had seen in 2019. And in 2019, not, we did not expect the slightest bit that the numbers would jump back to normal in such a short period of time. Yeah. But this shows how powerful and how effective the social media is. Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, now we are living in such a very important sports event uh, which is taking place here in Egypt, the 27th edition of the World Handball for Men. Well, Egypt uh, hosted this event uh, which started from the 13th of January and is going to continue to the 31st of the same month. When you see the photos of the national teams and of the heavyweight uh, names in the world of handball in um, uh, um, w uh, they were very keen to take photos uh, when the background is the wonderful Giza plateau, the pyramids, when, uh, the, uh, uh, when they do take photos on the shores of Alexandria, for example, I think it turned to be a touristic event rather in, uh, equally as it is uh, an important, huge sports event. How do you see these events, sir, and how it's going to attract more people? How everyone who was here in Egypt in this period is going to be an ambassador for Egypt to propagate for our country? We have talked about this many times before, and we said that paid campaigns are something that's becoming old-fashioned. Now you need to work on the mental image and this, what you're talking about, it's totally speaking about a mental image. Because when you, when you look at the paid campaigns, everyone knows that this is a paid campaign. But when you broadcast an event like this worldwide, you are actually affecting the, um, the image in the back of the mind or the back end of the mind of all the people worldwide. So you're pushing them unwittingly in order to look at Egypt with a very positive look. Mm -hmm. So this is much more important than paid campaigns. I believe that events, um, that these events are the best ways of publicity and actually it's way much better than, um, than paid campaigns. It's a free, effective campaign. Amen and I, to that. Uh, sir, yes. we are going to go to a very short break and we are going to turn back to continue our conversation. Stay with us.
Back to Mr. Ehab Kemal to continue our conversation about the latest developments of the tourism sector. Uh, Mr. Ehab, to continue what we started um, regarding uh, the tourism sector and how to boost uh, it more and to uh, try to face by all means the repercussions of COVID-19, how do you see, sir, the importance of renovating and developing the historic site and the um, um, inauguration of uh, many of our museums after renovating them? Last but not least, it was ISIS Museum. And by the way, we were even celebrating the National day of Aswan uh, recently, this wonderful place which, con which contains a lot of our monuments. Well, I believe that this is something very important and it's a step that we were a bit late in taking, but better being late, bit better being late than never. Yeah. Because this is our brand. The, the Egyptian brand, it's not the beach on the Red Sea, it's the pyramids the Sphinx, the Valley of the Kings, the temples, the monuments, it's cultural tourism. This is our brand, and working on this brand makes us unique because you will never find any countries that have such a rich heritage like Egypt. So I believe this is a very good step that we started paying attention to our real brand. Mm -hmm. This um, this cultural and historical brand, and I hope it continues because yeah. this is going to make to put Egypt in a completely different place in yep. the region in regards to tourism. Yeah. I believe that we should continue as well to not only develop our historical sites but to get tourism to be involved in everything. Yeah. And in, so, regard, in regards to public services, yeah. so that we can have a bigger number of travelers who can enjoy a decent standard of services exactly like the citizen himself. Because you have no idea how this is going to impact our tourism industry. We will mm -hmm. be put in a completely different place. Yeah. Sir, while we were speaking, we were watching some of the photos taken by the uh, national teams of different countries who are here currently in Egypt participating in the 27th edition of uh, the World Cup of Handball. To uh, return to the museum's issue in a specific cause, we are going to inaugurate or to witness the opening of the gym or the Grand Egyptian Museum in a few months from now. At least uh, uh, this is the news we do have. This is going to be another phase also because the gym uh, or the grand Egyptian museum is going to be a leap is going to be a booming issue is going to be something to attract more and more visitors from all over the world true this is true that's what i was talking about the gym itself it became a brand yeah. like the british museum like the louvre, louvre like our hermitage yes like the hermitage in in russia as a matter of fact we needed this since a very long time. Yeah. Of course, this should be accompanied by a world-class event. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this event can be sold as well. I sure. Mean, it, it's, it's not just I'm trying to impress the world, but I should start marketing the event. And you, this will bring the elite the world-class visitors to attend this because those people are effective people, people who affect the lives of many people, yeah. millions of people. Mm -hmm. So we should make the most out of it. Yep. Sir, also, mm -hmm. I think among these steps which were taken to add to what you're saying or to uh, the efforts exerted to attract the even attention of the elite, as you've kindly mentioned, uh, Dr. Khalil Al Alani, Minister of Tourism and Antiquities, was always keen to take with him many of the foreign ambassadors while witnessing more excavations or announcing um, uh, the discovery of more uh, sarcophagi or troops, wherever they are, whether in the necropolis of Saqqara, as was uh, what was recently discovered or announced, or in El Minya, all over Egypt. There are places which are not discovered and 
uh, whenever there is an event like that with those top diplomats, I think this was another good step. How do you see this, sir? I believe that Dr. Khaled Al Anani is um, one of the best ministers of tourism we have ever had because the Minister of Tourism, there's nothing asked from him more than this to present the country, to um, improve the brand, to put the country in its right position in world's tourism without. Pay, without paid campaigns, as I said before. So actually, he's preserving the image in a very tough time. Mm -hmm. And this will, is going to repay in the future. So I believe that what he's doing is very clever, very efficient performance. And from here, I would like to thank him for his efforts for preserving the Egyptian image um, which I will believe it's going to have an impact on the tourism industry once the pandemic is over. And gaining more respect, sir, when we announced that all the latest uh, archaeological discoveries were made by Egyptian hands. Egyptian archaeologists now, um, they gained such uh, experience and the, they knew their land more than anyone. Do you agree with me on that? I totally agree. And... And for decades, we've been saying it. Give the chance to the Egyptian archaeologists. Yep. Give them the chance to prove themselves. It doesn't make any sense to see foreign uh, expeditions coming and working in Egypt. And, excuse me, I don't really know um, what they are doing inside these expeditions and I see young archaeologists coming from foreign countries having the chances of their lives to make a name mm. and to make a reputation and our archaeologists who were educated by the great generations of archaeologists starting from Ahmad Pasha Kamal to Dr. Ahmad Qadri to Kamal uh, al Kamal al Malakh, uh, Abdul Halim Nuruddin, yeah. all those. And I'm not giving them the chance. If they did not have the chance now, then yeah. when they're going to have it, and especially that most of them are young and ambitious. And very and, well educated. And very well educated, okay. yes. exactly. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Ihab Kamal, thank you very much for your input, sir. Always an added value to our programs. Have a very good day. Our breakfast show. Before we go, let me thank very much our senior video editor, Tar Ali, for the wonderful footages we had. Well, uh, you were in the company of my dear colleague, Hala Al Hamalawi, and myself, Nirmin Abdurrahman. Tomorrow is another day with another crew. Stay tuned only on Man TV International. Always. Fun.